2,500 bucks. All right, so luckily for us, we won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't spend our money at all. We just, like, you know, we just jointly share the cost. Okay, yeah, good. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the meta learner, do you have any heuristics of how to dictate how the model will behave? How do you oh, actually, I forgot one more thing. Actually. Thank you, Venus, actually. It's not related to your question, but for meta learning, actually, I, mean, I, I think I mentioned that, but we just trying to predict the other numeric features available for training set and include them as a features <laughs> to the, our second level model. And actually, that gave, gave us a significant boost. So that's, without that I, that, I think we will end up like in, I would say, in the third place, maybe fourth. Because of this uh, additional features, we just end up in the third. So, so my question is, how do you pick models for diversity? Um, are there some rules or heuristics? Black magic. <laughs> now, uh, to, to be honest, actually, I know Stas has some, Stanislav, he has some approach, actually, to, to really identify a good, uh, uh, a good uh, model for the second level models. And he just analyzing the distribution of the, of the prediction bigot value values for valid set and for trained, for test set. And basically, that means you just run some statistical test for that. But you know, basically, you need to be sure that distributions pretty much like, right? Because if you say you have some shift in the distribution, can be, you know, for validation set and the test set, that means something went wrong, and you shouldn't use this particular model for as a part of your ensemble. So, yes. Um, the question is, uh, What kind of solution? Can you repeat the solution? Mean? Yeah, so basically why we don't use the linear programming or any, any, any type of solution for closed form problem? <laughs> the thing is we, we don't, I mean basically we're trying to predict the next big dem adjusted demand, right, basically. So I'm pretty sure it's a part of the bigger solution to actually to you know to, it, it, I I'm pretty sure it's a part of the, some optimization uh, solution for Bimba, but we we weren't part of that solution, you know. So imagine I mean we just do approximation, right? So we just let's say for for, the, for, for in order to complete complete such kind of optimization for the future, you need to have some sort of a prediction of the future values. That's our part. I. I'm pretty sure they actually they're trying to optimize this, the, the, the whole actually the, the whole uh, supply chain schema because it's kind of to me it sounds like a little bit crazy if, if you ask myself. Like, so yeah, I'm pretty sure there is some sort of a optimization on top of that. But that, that wasn't a part of the competition, so we just make a prediction, right? And you guys, thank you. I think it's so that was the last question because we we're now we now we just out of time. You can you can find me after that and I can ask you questions as well. Thank you guys. <laughs> I welcome Vladimir. Can you introduce him? Yeah. So Vladimir is a, he's a he's a Kaggle master and he will share the his solution for the recent competition which calls us Allstate claim something. All state claim severity, I believe, or something. All state claim severity, and he actually, I was end up on this competition as like one hundred something. He end up on forty, so you definitely would like to hear him. Okay, so can you hear me? Yes, yes no, yeah. yeah. So first question that I would like to ask you, how many of you tried to ever do at least one submission at any Kaggle competition? Okay, around half. This is good, meaning more than I expected. How many of you are Kaggle masters or Kaggle grandmasters? 
more than I expect, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, how many of you did at least one submission to this, like, all state claim severity competition? Three, okay, four, including me. So, in this sense, it will be interesting, okay? So, like, I mean, small introduction, similar to what Dmitry did, like, my name is Vladimir, I'm from Russia, obviously, with respect to my accent. Uh, currently, I work in the company named True Accord in San Francisco, and my, like, title is Senior Data Scientist. Education-wise, I have PhD in physics from UC Davis, but no one should really care about this, like, with respect to Kaggle. At Kaggle, as we all know, gender, race, age, education is not relevant. How much money do you have is relevant, because you'll be able to have this, like, you know, like, expensive service, as Mitri mentioned. <laughs> it's definitely, like, a bonus, but, like, I mean, such is life, yeah? Okay, so... This like all state competition was recruiting competition, yeah? So Dmitry and his team, when they won Bimbo problem, yeah, they got a lot of money, yeah? For all state prize was that like recruiter of the all state will start thinking, considering about looking at your resume if you apply for junior data scientist position, yeah? <laughs> so basically at the end of the day, like goal of this competition was like knowledge, fun, like maybe collaboration, just like to learn something new. And all state and Kaggle, they did amazing job in terms of preparing data set. Recently, this whole, we've seen a lot of examples when there was like data leak and some issues with the data, it was not the case. All state data set was really, really, really good. Yeah? Okay, because like only half of you like <coughs> ever tried like to participate in Kaggle, I want to spend a couple minutes and talk about things like this. Yeah? So, uh, Dmitry in his talk mentioned stuff about stacking, and usually when people like data scientists discuss some solution from machine learning problem that involves stacking, like some holy wars start, yeah? People that never tried competing versus people that tried competing, they talk in slightly, they use same words but talk about different things and it doesn't end well, yeah? So to prevent this, I just want to mention things. Guys, machine learning and deep learning is a big thing. And it consists on of very like you know intersecting like areas. Yeah, one of them is competitions, as we just like you know kind of Kaggle, ImageNet, something else. Yeah, academia. I mean, many of us like you know spend time there. And industry, where you bring value to the company and like you know move your company to the bigger revenue. Yeah. So like, what's the difference? And the difference is like, although you use similar algorithms, you use like similar techniques, you just like write similar code, the goal is different, yeah? So when you do it like in academia, of course like how good your model and how novel your approach is, yeah? When you like talk about industry, you are heavily constrained by like size of the model, can you interpret this or not, how does, like, how well does it scale and things like this, yeah? But in the competitive environment, meaning like Kaggle, for example, yeah, no one cares. This like solution that Dmitry mentioned, two and a half weeks server, this is great. No one cares. And that's why I just, because, and I'm saying this because like some solution, so good solutions to this all state problem, they are not like directly applicable in industry and just like, yeah. It's purely like competitive machine learning approach, yeah? Okay, let's move on. So what do we have, like, all state, they participate, they provide data for Kaggle, I believe, third time already, yeah? So they get results that they want, they believe there is good investment of their money, and they good, do a good job preparing the data, yeah? So we have, like, more than 3,000 teams <laughs> participating, and although, as I mentioned, price was not that attractive as, like, for Dmitry's problem, still, 3,000 participants, it's good. Amount of knowledge that was shared at the forum was tremendous, yeah? So for those, like, for people that try to participate, they like learned a lot, yeah? I mean, in this room. So, okay, so at the end of the day, what do we have? We have data, data is pretty small, so it's like big number, like meaning like to have like 100,000 shows and like, you know, another 100,000 for like test set. It's significantly smaller than Dmitry mentioned and you can easily get decent result just on your laptop. You like, to get decent result, there is no need to have like servers, clusters, GPUs, etc. Although, as I mentioned later, to get great results, you definitely need this, yeah? Okay, so, metric. You need to predict, like, claim, like, like insurance claim. 
it's some like continuous number which has this like weird skew distribution and evaluation metric that we needed to use is like mean absolute error, yeah? Just like introduction to the problem. So data is anonymous and they did really great job like anonymizing this so no like, there was no success in terms of the anonymization. So at the end of the day you have a table, it's like, you know, like in the future numbers like cat one, cat three, cat 25, meaning like categorical, or count one, count two, count five, meaning like continuous, yeah? And it's filled by like, like by digits or numbers and you have no clue what do they mean, but you still need to solve this problem. Okay, so at the end of the day, like if you look at the public leaderboard, which was like measured in terms of this loss, you can roughly, yeah, there's a lot of text, so I will just like, kind of go through this. So at the end of the day, it was pretty clear that there are like different like level of like maybe knowledge or skill of the participants, yes? So they were like 16% of the people this just row, they just know basics of machine learning, they can clean the data, they can train the model to cross validation with linear regression and do submission, yeah? And they get some result, which is not random, which does prediction, but like can we do better, yeah? And then you go to the second line. There are people that like know something besides linear regression, maybe random forest, maybe like support vector machine, maybe something else. They know how to do cross validation, clean the data, do prediction, and they're in this range, like 1200 to 1300, 28% of the participants. We go deeper, yeah? No, okay. Basically, to get like to some result, which is like around like 11, 20, all that you need, you need to know that XGBoost exists. <laughs> you have the subject knowledge, someone told you, you read somewhere, you know this, and this is good. Because this automatically, move, and you can see that like, you know, 1300, 1200, and then like almost 1100, these gaps are big, yeah? And you go to this like third line by this like sacred knowledge, XGBoost exists. Yeah? Okay, so, but you know that it exists, but you don't really know how to tune these hyperparameters, 9% of the people, yeah? Then there are like people that know how to tune XGBoost. It not just like exists, but like know how to do it. 22% of the people, like, you know. And then after this, like so, come more complex thing, like some average linear combination, and at the end, like second from the bottom line, it's like stacking that Nietzsche mentioned, and I'll talk a bit like a bit later. And of course, like, you know, top 3% serious games. Yeah? <laughs> okay, next line. So, right now, I will tell, so like we have an anonymized data set. I need to do something. As I've said, like you just like train something, you get some prediction, but like there should be some ideas. There was a lot of ideas shared at the forum, a lot of kernels. I also tried to participate, but like first idea that you do, as you know, for like for machine learning algorithms, it's better if your target variable is more symmetric. Yeah, some algorithms want it to be normal, some just like more or less symmetric, and you can usually like find in literature statement that like more symmetric your target variable is better it is, yeah? This is lie. It's not lie. It's like wrong word. I would say it is overstatement. With respect to business values of the L all state and problem that they try to answer, they want mean absolute value metric. With respect to initial big variable, yeah? If you do transformation, for example, like on the left log, yeah, it's more symmetric than like in the middle or on like on the right. But it just means that your algorithm XGBoost linear regression or something like this will treat stuff on the left, which corresponds to hundred, let's say, dollars. With the same way as stuff on the right, meaning one hundred twenty thousand dollars, yeah. And yeah, it's symmetric. It looks good, but from business perspective, like hundred dollars and $120,000, they should be treated like differently. So good distribution of the target variable for this problem should be more symmetric than stuff in the middle, but it should have like heavier right tail to ensure that with respect to like metric that you need for your business, error on the like $120,000 point will be bigger than on the like $100, maybe not 1,200 times, but still bigger, yeah? And standard ways to make your distribution more symmetric is either you take logarithm or you take some like power of small number, yeah? For example, personally for me, you know, like power of like one quarter worked significantly better than log and of course better than like initial, yeah? Idea number two. 
we have like this, so like, of course we know that there is no perfect algorithm. You just like know that for this type of the data works, this algorithm better for another type of the data, another. Sometimes it's SVM, sometimes it's neural network, sometimes it's linear regression. I'm sure there are like a number of problems that I met that nothing can beat linear regression just because like data asks for it, yeah? And so, what about this? What do we have here? So here we have amount of data from like 10,000 to like 10 million and data is of the mixed type, meaning it doesn't have some kind of local structure as time series or like texts or images, nothing of this. So like this like variables, probably maybe like age, gender, zip code, something else as a feature set there, like no local structure there. And for this type of the data, 95% of the problem, decision trees are good. And what is our like ch algorithm of choice for decision trees? It's typically XGBoost, as Dmitry mentioned, and of course here was similar like this. Just for comparison, what participants of this competition we're able to get like on the other algorithms, yes? And this number smaller is better, yeah? So best like result on the leaderboard is like a bit less than 1100, and here you just can see that XGBoost gets pretty close, neural networks kind of like GBM, random forms is worse, and like just like linear regression, the regularization is like gives you this result, yeah? So, okay. Idea number three. As I mentioned before, like it's not enough to know that XGBoost exists. You need to know to tune it well. For all other algorithms, you also need to tune them well. They have hyperparameters. Sometimes you have like experience and you just like know what like sets of hyperparameters will work the best, but still there's a lot of work, yeah? So approaches, what approaches can you use? You either can do it manually. It is most accurate, but the most time consuming, typically you try to avoid doing this, yeah? Something like grid search or randomized grid search when you like set like set of the parameters, go through them, something works, something not, you get. But like it's also not very efficient because face space is still big. And third one, there is like some packages that try to do some kind of Bayesian or maybe like some other more intelligent way of optimizing hyper parameters. And people, participants of this competition, they try to use hyper opt and Bayesian optimization. Personally for me, I took Bayesian opt, find like promising regions of hyperparameters, and then did manual tuning in this like regions to narrow down to like more optimal solution, yeah? Another, I didn't mention this, another source of good hyperparameters to find it was reading forum. People shared like what like worked well for them, and just like it was like huge time saver. Okay? <laughs> Not very applicable like in academia or in industry, but like in terms of competitive machine learning, just like read the forum and just absorb all good ideas. And new features, yeah. Okay, idea number four, yeah? It is kind of well known or at least believed, and it's the case in my practice, if you have some evaluation metric that you need for business or like in the sense of competition, it is the best when your loss function is exactly the same. So, but you know, you see, Maya has absolute value there, and, you, and it's not different. I mean, you can take first derivative, and you can use it for neural networks or other like gradient descent optimis, optimized algorithm as a like, just kind of like loss function, yeah? But for like gradient boosting and some other algorithms that also require second derivative, it doesn't work because like second derivative of the absolute value is delta function, and we just don't know how to encode it, yeah? But like what was proposed, I don't know who proposed it, but there was big discussion at the forum and people discussed that like instead of using absolute value that has the singularity in zero, you can use approximation of this, meaning this function logarithm of like hyperbolic cosine. And as you can see from this plot below, it looks pretty similar, yeah? And for this like log of like cosine, hyperbolic cosine, you can take first derivative, second, you can encode this as your like, you know, optimization as loss function in your XGBoost or any other algorithm. And in case it gave you a bit more points, it was a good idea. Idea number five, how should you encode categorical variables? Yeah, there are like a number of ways to do this. Can be label encoding, one code encoding, you can use target variable to do it, mm, something else, yeah? So for this model, I mean, all of them works, depending, like, for what? For example, you cannot use label encoding for, like, neural networks. 
and it doesn't make that much sense to use one port encoding for decision trees, so you kind of like choose in this sense. But somehow people figure out that there is correlation between like what is like label anonymous. So you look at some categorical variable and it has like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. Yeah, and somehow people looked at the correlation between like ordering and these letters and your target variables. And presumably it was better to encode A is zero, B is one, C is like two, etc. So like lexicographical ordering and this encoding, if you align them, it helped to decrease the number of splits for, you know, like GBOOs and other decision trees, and this decreased number of splits, so it gave you like small gain. Of course, like in business, you would not care about this negligible gain, but for competitions, when you fight for like few digits after the decimal point, it was definitely like something. Idea number six. It is believed, and you can see this in literature, that let's say neural networks, so like decision trees, they find quadratic interactions and higher level interaction. E, to be accurate, it's not exactly the case. They approximate them. <coughs> so neural networks and decision trees and everything else, they approximate quadratic and higher order interactions. So if you directly, by hands, add like quadratic interactions between the most important features, it will help your algorithms to just use them and you get like another game there, yeah? For example, for XGBoost, which is like believed to like find interactions in the data and does it like this, you in, like encode, you add categorical, you add features that like represent interactions between like some features and your score improves. And of course, for linear model, like jump is bigger question. Yes, question. I thought that XGBoost, if it is really like a regression, uh, regression trees, then uh, the depth of each tree actually tells you uh, how many interactions, how much non-linearity you improve. So it's like that. This is three. correct. So question is like XGBoost, you, there's like parameter, meaning like max depth, that you basically can define or maybe constrain like how much interaction do you want in your model, yes? Exactly. Uh, so if we had infinite number of data and infinite computational power, we can go to very, very deep trees and they would find all this interaction. But because amount of data that we have fits into the laptop, if we get like to a really, really deep tree, capacity of the model will be really, really high and you instantly overfit. Yeah, but the, let's say if you have depth just of two, normal depth is like a four, three. But if you have just, uh, just normal depth for this competition was up to twenty-five. Okay, mm -hmm. but anyway, if you have depth of two, then you already ca should capture all the uh, like uh, depend non-linear dependency between two raw variables. So it's like so it's basically like having a feature of a like of uh, multiplication of two two features. This is correct, but as I've said, if you have infinite number of data and the infinite computational power, we would be able to run gradient boosting the depth too and like just go forever. Yeah? It's actually like following this question, typically for, um, for gradient boosting algorithm, depth of the tree that we like, depending on the data, varies from 5 to 10. Yeah? I believed before this problem, but like then I figured out that like 13 works better and the best gradient boosting model reported by participants, by Ferron who got third place, he used 25 plus aggressive regularization to just take care of this. So yeah, it's to the question of the hyperparameter space that you need to explore. Be generous, but careful. But I mean, so we have depth, but actually depth. Do we need manually to have this uh, quadratic interactions or they will be figured out by the people themselves? That's, that's my claim. It's believed in literature, in literature that you don't need to do it. Exactly. But in practice you need. <laughs> I'd say for competitions, at least, yeah. you know, from practical point of view, it might be useless for competition and kind of, yeah, definitely. So how do you see that you cannot add the interactions between all the variables, right? Okay, so yeah, question is like, how do you like choose what quadratic interactions to add? So at the end of the day, you do it in this way. You train XGBoost like for something on the raw features, you pick top like 30 most important, <laughs> to take interactions between them, yeah? And that's what proposed and that's what worked really well. Okay. I have like. What's your intuition for why you need to manage the answer? I mean. You should already be considering the interaction. As I've said, like in theory, GBoost should find all interaction. In practice, it makes sense to add them because, like, plainly, it works better. 
without intuition, just okay. Yeah, the tree just focuses on everything else from then on, right? It doesn't have to do that anymore. So you just you're exactly, saving yeah. the last few digits basically to do more stuff. I mean, I guess it's kind of buying yourself an information gain in the two stages that you will have. Basically, yeah. Instead of like adding, you're saving like okay. space in the trees on splits because you explicitly encode. Okay, guys, like. Next one, okay, seventh idea. As Dmitry mentioned in his talk, feature engineering more is very important and gives you the most, and it's typically the case, except this problem. <laughs> <laughs> so for this problem, so like approaches for cargo, if you have anonymized data, like people do de-anonymization and they don't do meaningful, meaningful feature like engineering. Or they like use some kind of numerical ways, like statistical features to something else, like some kind of clustering to add like to the problem, yeah? Nothing worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there were like some ideas, some attempts, but like, you know, like change was marginal. So in this sense, all state did a really great job in this, yeah. So I cannot say. So this like plot at the bottom. I have it as an example, yeah? If you have feature con2, continuous feature 2, and you take like difference between like basically derivative of con2 versus con2, you have this. And in theory, it should tell you like what was the transformation to do this anonymization. I spent whole day, I have no clue. So yeah, job was really good. Okay, eighth idea. Like, to get under like under this like score 11, 1102, you need to do stacking. So Dmitry mentioned stacking, but there are a lot of questions about this. I just like want to spend a minute that I have <laughs> to talk about this. So like main idea of stacking, you want to do some kind of dimensionality reduction. You have whole data set with like 200 features, 500, something like this, yeah? You want to have one feature, one number that describes whole this data set, I mean, one number per row that describes it, yeah? Way to do it. You take your train set and you want to know how your model that you trained on this train set, what is prediction on it, yeah? And for this model on the test set. So basically you want to find prediction of your model on the train set and on the test set. On the test set, it's straightforward. You train like the model on train, do prediction on test, that's it. What to do with train? Because you can't predict on the data that you used for training. It's like <coughs> basic overfitting, yeah? So at the end of the day, if you look at the plot, if you can see it, yeah? What do we do? We take your train set, divide into the faults, and let's say, for example, right now, use like top, like, you know, three faults. You take like two to predict on the third, then you pick another two to predict like on the rest one, and that's what you do, yeah? So it's made out of all predictions. And like at each step you do predict on the test. It's pretty tricky idea in some sense, although when you understand this it looked obvious and I never used it before this competition. And I didn't believe that it's used in production, although some guys pointed me out on the cases when it does, okay? But at the end of the day it's very useful technique, especially for this type of the competitions. So, what happens like at the end of the day? You take your data set, your initial data, take some subset of this in terms of rows or columns, train XGBoost, train neural networks, support vector machines, linear regression, random forest, extra trees, everything else. You train on this data, plus you just like do different variable transformation, like, so you change algorithm that you're doing, you change representation of the data, you try different like loss function transformation, like you know, as I mentioned, logarithm or like square root or something else. You train all this bunch of models, you throw them into this like stacking like approach, stacking like machine, yeah. And on the second level, train another model. I use neural networks and it just basically combines them in a very nice way. Yeah. For example, that's what like structure of the algorithm of the approach. You can barely see this. I understand. I didn't draw this picture. It's one of the like Russian guys who like got like 20th place or something like this. Sure, didn't. It? So as you can see, like first level features some models XGBoost, like GBM, Keras, H2O, H2O, lasagna. Then like predictions on them go to the second level, and they're like some weighted mean H2O, XGBoost, extra trees. Third level and then final prediction. Yeah, so you like build this like sandwich, in which I mean here yeah, it's just that's why I mentioned this in the beginning that like competitions and like industry they like go for different directions because like applying this in production no way. 
Uh, no, you use cross validation to check. Like, I mean, you use lead report just for fun in some sense. You have your local score, and you just like look an improvement in your like cross validation on your machine and go with this. So when you like have improvement, that's good. If not, like try something else. It's dangerous because people do repeat, you know, even like if you're like, because if you're trying, well, it's the same as the optimal factor parameter. You, you may find something that your cross validation looks fine, but then when you go still another test set. Uh, so for this competition, like train set and like test set, they came from the same distribution. There was some mismatch, but like for this for this problem, improvement in your local cross validation score led to improvement in the leader book, more or less. Yeah. Okay. So and like sure, you did the stacking, you made prediction. Can you do more? Yes, I didn't do the step. That's why I'm forty. If I did, situation would be different. But like still. So we know that, and Mitri mentioned this, that for example, like decision tree type algorithms like XGBoost, they overestimate small values and underestimate big values, yeah? And it just means that you some kind of, can do some kind of calibration of your final predictions. And this was one of the transformations that people used for, you know, for this problem. <coughs> Basically, just scale and expand and this gave it. So at the bottom, there are two links. I, I know, like, you know, we have like only a few, like, I mean, it's here, the slides and maybe video, it's useful for sure. But like another way to do, I wrote some text in Russian and in English, they're like still drafts, and they basically mimic like words that I was saying here. So for those that are interesting, they just like may take a look and maybe like ask there or something, yeah? La I finished with competition, last slide. For those that never tried, I strongly recommend you people to try machine learning competitions. It's a lot of fun, a lot of knowledge, and for those that perform well as Dmitry, money, yeah? For example, some competition that happened right now, and I'm not joking because, guys, I mean, one competition about like some financial meddling, like there's something about like neural networks, computer vision, like one second, third, but look at the price, 100,000, 100,000, 150, and bottom, my favorite, one million. <laughs> so I mean, like, if you didn't try, like, like a couple competitions, go ahead and try. If you like, just like try it, maybe you put more effort and you like, you know, you'll give some good ideas there on the forum that I can use. And I can share <laughs> my ideas with you, etc., etc. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. That was very interesting, both of you. And the good news is actually I have XGBoost running on H2O right now, so we'll, we'll release that soon. We'll, we'll actually run XGBoost uh, natively in H2O. Uh, many other questions. I think we'll have some minutes here for later, but um, I'm going to close this here, and uh, thanks again for coming. Questions? Um, hey, um, have, any, have you guys uh, tried the uh, house price uh, regression? There's a house price regression called